Hi everyone, Jeffrey here and welcome back to Around the World in Many Days. Today's episode is number 12 and it's titled Many Moons and Suns Ago. You know the drill at this point, let's dive in and look at what Gladys has written, at, written us this time. Uh, let's first a quote there. Many moons ago, on an island far, far away. Dear Puzzling, uh, today I have a moon or sun puzzle for you. The grid is divided into rooms. Um, we have a grid, grid below here. Yeah? So, draw one continuous loop which visits every room exactly once, going horizontally and or vertically through centers of cells without crossing itself or branching out. The circles in the grid represent moons, black circles, and suns, white circles. In every room, the loop either passes through all the suns in the room but none of the moons, or all the moons in the room but none of the suns. Moon and sun rooms alter alternate, so if the previously visited room was a moon room, the next room has to be a sun room, and so forth. In the crossword, uh, light grey numbered cells, each answer is written around the numbered cell either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Any of the cells surrounding the number can serve as the starting point. Today I have explored bustling markets and beautiful sandy beaches on a picturesque island. Can you guess where I am? Love Gladys. Okay, so two puzzles again, a grid puzzle and then a crossword. Let's look at uh, the rules of the grid puzzle first and solve that and then come back, come back to how the crossword works because it's kind of non-standard. Uh, so let me open the editable moon or sun, which is here. So we need to, we have some moons here. Moons are the, these light circles and, no, sorry, suns are the light circles and moons are the black circles. And um, we have to form a loop that visits all of these, uh, all of these rooms. So let's see. Um, this is the one. So either we are visiting all of the moons like this, or we are visiting all of the suns, something like this. Uh, but in no room can we do both. We can't do something like this. And also if we visited moons in this room we have to visit wherever it goes we must visit all the all the well if we visit the sun here we must visit the moons in the following one and obviously there are there are rooms that which have neither so how do we go about solving this um, well first to think about maybe is uh, you need every room needs two neighbors where where the loop comes from and where it goes. And it can't go into the same room twice. Even these larger rooms, you can't do something like this and then enter this same, the same room again. So um, rooms that have very few neighbors are going to be extra important. So for example, this room here has three neighbors and this one has two. So for this, uh, one square uh, room, we already know that it has to visit, it, it has to come from here. This has to happen because otherwise it's going into the same room twice, right? So it's coming from there and then it's going into this room, but we don't know uh, which of these uh, three it's going to take. But we definitely know this is going to be the next room. Now, we have to also keep track of what uh, rooms are moon rooms and what rooms are sun rooms. So we're going to be using two colors here. I'm going to use um, maybe blue and red. So the, if this is blue, and we don't know if that's moon or sun, but we know that's blue, that's different basically from this. Um, so yeah, uh, this is going to be a, a red room. Now we have another, um, and obviously we will find out if red means moon or red means sun once we figure out enough of the loop. Again, uh, this uh, two cell two cell room also only has two neighbors, so it has to come from here and go here. Now that means that this is going to be blue, a blue room, and this is going to be a red room then. 
And we also know since from this blue room we are entering this, that means this must be uh, not be a blue room, it must be a red room. So let's see if we can make any more of that loop now. So we know we are entering from either of these, we are going this way, and we are exiting from one of these. If red means uh, moon, we're going to do this, we are going to visit this moon, and if Red means sun, we are going to avoid the, uh, the moon like this. Uh, so a couple of options, how we are entering this, but we know we are entering this from a, this uh, room from this blue. Now that means that we have to exit this room into a blue room again. It can't be another red room. So it can't be this. So we must exit through here. And then that means that uh, this room is blue. Now the next one must be red. It could be this or this. Two options. But if you think about, um, so I should also mark the line. We can, there's only one way to enter this room from here. So it's that way. And again, two options for the, the remainder inside this, uh, this room here, depending on whether it's a moon or sun room. But um, if you think about uh, this option, entering either that way or that way, entering uh, this red room from here. Now, what's that going to do? Uh, remember, we're going to make a, a single loop that visits all the rooms. If we, vi if we do this, then the next, uh, next room we are going to visit is going to be this one, because this has to enter uh, this surrounding room. So we're making this tiny loop here, and we're not visiting any of these white rooms. So this is in fact illegal. We can't do this and still visit all of these rooms. So that means this room here is the only other option. This has to be red, and we have to enter it through here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna color it red as well. Um, it's not red. Here we are. Now then, um, from the point of view of this room, we already sort of solved this one, even though we don't know wh whether it visits all the all the zero suns or all the zero moons in its uh, in inside it. We don't know which type of room it is, but we know how the loop visits it. Now, um, from the point of view of this, we knew that this was uh, joining these two rooms was impossible. Well, the same same thing helps us when we think about this room. Now it can't go this way, and it has to exit into a blue room. Now, how is that going to happen? All the surrounding cells are red except this one. So this cell has to be blue. So the line has to go uh, has to do something. Still three options, but it has to exit this way, and this must be a blue room, like that. Now then, um, if we think about this, this moon here, if red is moon, let's just draw it in. Um, I'm, I'm going to erase that. Just, just a thought experiment. If this is moon, uh, red is our moon rooms. That means we join this, right? We visit the moon here. We visit all the suns when there are no, there are no suns, so it doesn't make any difference. But we have to visit all the moons here now. And we cannot visit the suns, which means we cannot visit this. So we must go up. But now this would be a blue room, and it, that we would be visiting a moon in a blue room, which would be a sun room then. So we can't go up here, because red would be a moon room and blue would all of a sudden be a moon room. So that doesn't work. Visiting this uh, does not work. We couldn't go uh, anywhere from this cell. If, if red is moon, we cannot go here, and if blue is sun, we cannot go there. So all that means that this is illegal. There's no solution from this cell forward. 
So the only other option, if we can't go uh, continue from this cell uh, to the, towards the left, we go up and then go here to join this this other uh, sort of uh, line here. Now that solves our rooms then, because now we are avoiding the moon in this red room. So that means that reds are sun rooms. And now there is a solution from here. We cannot, uh, sorry, we can actually go upwards because that would make this a blue room and we would be visiting a moon. That would be legal. And this would also be legal because uh, um, blue, um, the reds are sun rooms and we would be visiting this sun. But we actually, we know more than that. We know that if we do this, now reds are still sun rooms. And now we're not visiting, we are entering and exiting. We cannot come back to the same room and we haven't visited this suns. So this is not possible. We have to visit this and we have to get here as well. Only one way to do it, go here and turn here. And now we must exit into a blue room. Now two options, obviously this is a red room, can't go there, this or this. If we exit down, uh, that runs into the same problem we had earlier. This would make, if we if we continue this loop, we go here, it exits here, visits the sun here, goes here, and then makes this mini loop. And we are not visiting any of these rooms. So in fact, we cannot go down. We must go right, making this a blue room. All of these are blue. Now, if you look at this, end of the, the line here. That's very restricted. Sorry about the scrolling. Scrolling, I have to keep uh, changing from the uh, shading and the, the line tool. Hope it's not too distracting. So if, the, if we look at this end here, uh, obviously it can't go into another blue room. So it must go into a red room. This has already been taken. Uh, we can't go into this again. And we can't go into this because the neighbors of this, we know that uh, the line has to come from this room. And in fact, we can all already fill in that because we know uh, it has two options. And this one is illegal because now we're not visiting the sun in the sun room. So we must go here, visit the sun and only then exit. And we can also uh, fill in this room. So. If we go here, we're not visiting the sun because we're going this way. If we go here, we are not visiting the sun. So the only way to visit the sun is to go here and then exit this way. So those, all of those are actually already done, already known to us. And now oh, it's, it's plain to see where this uh, this end is going to continue. Since it can't go into the other blue room, it has, it has to go here and then to the right. So this corner here is now a red room. Uh, now then, what about what about this blue room here? Obviously, it can't go down because again we would be making this mini loop and not visiting all the rooms. So it has two options: it can go here or here. Now, do we know which one it must do? Well, we know if it goes here, it must go, oops, sorry about that. Wrong tool again. Uh, so uh, if, if this is uh, the next room from this point, uh, it's going to be a red room. So we will have to visit this sun. We would have to do this. And um, if we go here, uh, maybe that's the better way to start. If we go into this tiny room here, we are there now. So now this leaves, uh, this room has to be taken. So this, this, that leaves this with only two neighbors. So it has to come from there and it has to go here in some, some way. It, it doesn't matter which way, but that also completes a mini loop now because we can't visit this room twice. That's illegal. So we have to complete this inside the room and now 
however we complete this, we are uh, making uh, closing the loop too soon. So in fact, all of this means that this end here cannot go into this uh, two by one room. It must go into this one. So this is a red room. And since it's a red room, yeah, red, this one. Since it's a red room, we must miss, uh, visit this, this sun here. So go down and then back up, making this now a blue room. So let's shade that as well. That's not the color. Blue room. And also, only one way to exit this red room and making this a blue room as well. So let's fill that in. Must exit the, from here, here. And uh, obviously can't complete the loop here, so we must go at least here. We, uh, and also we have like three options for this to continue. There, or there, or there. Okay. Uh, but this is more restricted, this other one, because now it has only one neighbor that can still be read uh, and not taken already, which is this one. So it must enter this one. And now it has two options of uh, which one is going to be the next one. But I'm going to color this red now. Now then, um, we can look at this room, which has only two neighbors. So it must come from here and must go into this, which means if it comes from blue room, that's a, uh, if it comes from a red room, this is a blue room and that's a red room. So red here and blue here. And we already know something about the loop as well. So it must come from here, only one, oh, one place to enter from this room, obviously, because it's one cell. And now, Mm, read some uh, sun rooms, so we must visit this sun. If we do, do this, there's no way to. Um, there is actually a way to, way to visit the sun. We could do something like this. So it's not actually clear whether we should go this way or this way. Maybe we should look at this this one first, how, or which way this goes, and that way we can tell. So how? Where's this going to go? It's going to go into a red room. Well, it can't be this one, because re the red room, however we enter it, if we enter it from this way, we're going to have to close the loop inside this room. We can't enter it twice. And that would leave, leave two rooms uh, unvisited. So I'll remove those. So we were here and here. So this cannot enter this red room. So it, the only other option is this this room, making it red. Okay. And now, since this red room is coming from a blue room, it's going to go into a blue room, and it only has this option now. I mean, this if this is red, we have nowhere to go from here, right? So this is going to be blue, and we, we have completed the coloring, and can maybe stop scrolling so much. So now we are in this uh, sun room, this uh, red room, and... Uh, Obviously, we can't enter another red room, so we have to go from here and uh, either here or here or here. Three options. Well, this is ruled out because blues are, uh, these are moon rooms, so we can't visit the sun. So this is going to happen, and then one of these. Also, since the, uh, since the blue is a moon room, we know the loop is going to visit this, and this only has uh, two neighbors that it can use, like this is already taken, so it must take both of these. And this this part of the loop can't go up because we can't visit the sun, so it must go there. And this this part only has one way to go, right? And now, since we must visit the sun here, uh, now we actually do run into a problem, like I was trying to say earlier, if we do this, there's no way to visit the sun, because how are we going to close the loop now? So it's going to be up here and then close the loop. And that is the solution uh, to the moon uh, sun. So we made the loop there and colored in some, some rooms. 
and we're going to need this uh, uh, this grid later when we look at the crossword answer. So uh, let's let's look at the crossword now. I'm going to close this for a minute. And the reason I paused there is I'm not sure if I have the I can show both the grid and the clues at the same time. Let's see where my grid is. So the grid is here. Let's see if we can make this work somehow. So I'll make this smaller. Great preparation, Jaffe, by the way. So sorry about this. I should have fit fit it on the screen i sort of fit it on this screen and then i didn't realize that i needed to show the clues as well but i think we can see everything now all right so number so we are entering letters really but this side calls the numbers so okay so how does this uh, crossword work then so we pretty unusual crossword uh structure so we are going uh, going around these numbers. So number nine, uh, number three, for example, for example, is nine letters, and it's going around this three in uh, either direction. It can be start from anywhere and go one direction or the other. So obviously, sharing some some uh, some of these letters with with other answers. So. Um, Let's look at number one. So this is going to be five letters now, and we don't know where it starts and where it ends. So the core personnel of a military unit, five letter word, uh, is uh, the word cadre. The, the cadre of a military unit is its core personnel, C-A-D-R-E. Now it could be a, a number of different ways right so we c a d r e this would be valid it goes around it doesn't have to start at a specific place but we're going to need these uh, crossing uh, crossing answers to to sort of know in which order it goes and where it starts so let's look at um three is a long one let's look at five so five is also a five letter answer and the five reads Reads a QR code, perhaps. What do you do to a QR code to read it? You would scan a QR code. So that would be reads with an S here means. Sorry about that. Just kick my camera. Okay. Um, scans would be the answer here. So uh, if we look at the letter scans. And we would need cadre here. No, cadre doesn't have an S, so these are out, uh, and we have two uh, two shared letters. So these are out, these S's for these positions, and cadre also doesn't have an N. So these are going to be C A. Now we don't don't know which way they go. They could be A C or C A. Both of these can go in either direction. So it could be C A D R E like this, and then scans would be starts from here S C A N S. That would be valid, but it could also be the other way around. It could be C A here, so it would be cadre spe spelled out clockwise here, and then it would be uh, and that clockwise here S C A N S. That would also be valid. So we don't know, but we know these are A C in some order. Now, uh, how about how about eight? Although these long answers may be not as useful because nine letters you can find it's easier to find more letters that match in a, in a long long answer. But let's look at eight anyway. Artistically simulated. So if you simulate simulate someone artistic uh, simulate did I say simulate stimulate? If you stimulate someone artistically uh, you inspire them and inspired would be nine letters artistically simulated 
So um, what letters does that have in common with scans? So if we look at scans, um, so it has two S's and then an AC. So there is an S in inspired, there's an N, but there's no A and no C. So that means that these are going to be S and N in some order. Uh, now, that, does that help us with the, the order of the scans? So if this is S, let's go that, do that first. If this is S, then we have CA. Uh, no, it can't be. Uh, this is the ending S, so it would be S, C, A, N. But that doesn't work because S can't be here. These have to be A, C. So this can't be S. So we have to have N, S in this direction. Now, how does this work now? A, C here and S here scans like this. And we can't have the C, A like this because uh, the preceding letter from C would be S scans. The, the starting letter has to be S and there's no S next to this. So it has to be AC in this direction. So S, S, C, A, and S going anti-clockwise here uh, spells out the scans. And we do know now uh, in which direction it goes and where it starts. So it starts here. That also uh, solves our card right here. So C, A, and then D, R, E is going to be in this direction. And inspired is now only if it's only one way here because N, S, only one S, N, in, is inspired by my calculations and uh, the s is next to it so the i must be the other other neighbor of that n so ins p i r e d so that gives us a lot of letters for the uh, top left corner there now what would be the next uh, the best place to go next now this nine has three letters already so maybe that's and it's an eight letter answer this six takes one one of its letters so eight letters with p either pir or rip can be either way so afghanistan is their graveyard uh, a term for afghanistan sort of nickname for the country is the graveyard of empires and empires is eight letters and it has this pir so it starts from here e m p i r e s empires now then um let's look at what do we look next how about this 11 we have two letters d e or e d and five letter answer equipped with weapons if you equip someone with weapons, uh, you armed them. So only one way to fit armed here. This is ED is going to be the end, and we have ARM. So 11 was armed. Now this 13 looks doable with this M and R, pretty unusual combination of letters. So let's look at 13 next. And remember, these don't have to be next to each other. As, as with PIR, this could have been IR something something and ending in P. So it doesn't have to be like successive letters. The, the split, can, split can be somewhere here. And this can be something starting with M, ending in R, or, or starting with R, ending in M. It doesn't have to be something containing MR or RM. Anyway, 13 is engine, or one, <laughs> one word clue. Five letter word for engine containing M and R. Uh, a motor is an engine. So that's going to be the answer there. And only one way to fit it, starting from the M, can't go that way. So M O T O R. And uh, now 12 is looking good. We have four letters already filled for 12. 12 uh, says advertises. So O T E S. Uh, if you start from here, can you think of a word meaning advertises, ending in this S here, uh, nine letters, the answer is promotes, you promote something, you advertise it, promotes, spelled out this way, 
Now let's see what's the best way to go next. We have two for this six. We have two for this fourteen, which is only five letters. So let's go there next. So fourteen is message received. If you say message received, a short word for message received, like over the radio, is Roger. Now that has two R's, but containing, uh, considering this O needs to be next to one of them, it has to be starting from here, R-O-G-E-R. -E Roger like that. Now E R pretty common letters, but maybe they are still helpful for this 10. Um, 10 is a long look. If you look at someone for a long time, you stare at them, and that has this RE at the end. So it will start from here, ST, and A would be here. Now then, uh, let's look at... We don't have any short answers remaining. What about this six? Eight letters with M, E, or E, M. A reverse curve. Uh, this, if you think of starting with this ME, eight letters for a, a reverse curve is a meander. M E A N D E R. So it goes from this M and it goes uh, anticlockwise here. And uh, since that was meander and we knew which uh, which way it went, now we also already have four letters for this three. Now we don't know this middle letter, but we know it has RE and RE, or ER and ER. So let's look at three. Lighthearted. And um, yeah, so it's going to be. Uh, not sure how how hard this is. The answer is carefree. So it has these two RE's here. So it starts from here. But I'm trying to think of another word for lighthearted. There's nine letters fitting this. I don't think... I think these limit a lot when you have four letters already from for a nine letter word. So it's carefree is the answer. The F is here in the middle and free goes that way. Uh, Obviously, can't be care. Care can't be starting from here because we only have one letter in the middle and two here. So um, let's look at two then. Uh, two is five letters, and uh, we have two of them. So let's see. Evacuate from a fighter jet. Say, now say, just uh, remember these are not cryptic clues. Encrypted clues say can be an indicator of. Another thing, but here it's just uh, for example, uh, meaning that it doesn't have to be a fighter jet, but you evacuate from something that might be a fighter jet, but it could be another thing as well. And uh, how would you evacuate from a fighter jet? Well, you you would eject, right? You would eject from a from a plane. So, uh, which way do we go there? Uh, so we have this EC, so that's going to be the end, ECT, and the E and the other E and the J are going to be here. So this is the one that's next to the C. It's only one way to go. Uh, gives us a J, but that's not actually next to any other other word. So this ET are going to be next to this, uh, are going to be part of this, this four. Four is... Uh, ugly TV character, ugly in, in the square, scare quotes. Uh, so it's not going to be just a, a TV character that's um, that's not good looking. It's going to be a TV character that is known as, as ugly. And there is a TV character called Ugly Betty, uh, which has this ET, and there's only one way to put Betty here. B, ET. T and Y here. And that gives, now we have almost all letters for the seven. So S, T, A, N, D, B, Y, and one more letter to give us people ready to depart on a moment's notice. So it's going to be standbys. And when we put this S here, I think it says we are correct. Okay, we are. So that was uh, sort of an unusual type of crossword. We just have to 
go around these these numbers and then uh, yeah we have a finished grid now so we can now maybe look at uh take another look at the um, the moon or sun and try to figure out where Gladys is this time. So remember we were looking for oh, put that out of the way there. So bustling markets and beautiful sandy beaches on a picturesque island. So we're looking for the name of an island. And uh, uh, but it doesn't say say how to look uh, how to find the answer here. So uh, let's look at the the moon or sun grid. If I can put them on on the screen at the same time, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Here it is. So maybe we should uh, trace this this loop on on this crossword grid. Remember, this is the same size. Uh, this is essentially the same grid. If you look at the actual actual puzzle, it's uh, they are literally in the same grid here. The numbers for the crossword and then these for the rooms for the moon and sun. But obviously, I mean, I prefer to solve it in, a, in two separate windows, and I assume most people would as well. But yeah, let's uh, let's put this uh, loop into this uh, in the into this uh, crossword grid and see if we can find something there. So the loop is going to go. Uh, from the second row here, and it's going to go all the way down, then uh, all the way to the right, then all the way down. Then it's going to be four cells. So it's going to go here and then up, two cells up, and then here up, two to the left, and then avoid this uh, corner cell here. So not there, like this. And then we go up and to the right. Oops, that's not the way to go. So to the right here, then we go down and then to the right and down again. We go all the way up, uh, not all the way up. We avoid these two cells. So these two go up, we don't go here, avoid that, up again, then to the left, down, to the left, and then we avoid this uh, corner cell as well. Okay, so that looks like the same uh, same loop. Now, does anything stand out from here? And uh, something should. It's a bit uh, maybe not jumping out immediately. But if we look at um, letters that were left sort of uh, untouched by this loop. I'm going to mark this somehow. So we have this D, which is uh, that's a terrible color. Uh, let's do this. So D, uh, we have this A here, J, E, this R, and this B here. And all the other letters um, were sort of visited by that loop. And now that those five letters, or six letters, if you count correctly, uh, they spell out Gerba. And believe it or not, that is the name of an island. So Gerba is the answer. And uh, let's just look at where we are then. So this is Gerba. Zoom in a little bit. So that's in Tunisia, just off the coast of Tunisia. And yeah, that is an island. And that is Gladys's current destination, right there off the coast of Tunisia. And uh, that also explains, if you look up Gerba, you, uh, that actually explains something in the description that we didn't really explain yet. If we go back to the back to the description, we had the um, the puzzle started with this quote: "Many moons ago, on an island far, far away." No, far, far away. I mean, I mean, depending depending on where you are, Java might be far or or close, obviously. But what happened on Java many moons ago? So this is uh, might be a familiar quote because it's uh, like obviously from Star Wars. 
many, well, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, right? So many moons ago. And uh, the original Star Wars, one of the filming locations was actually Gerba. The most isolated uh, scenes were, were shot in uh, on the island of Gerba in Tunisia. So that's why this quote is here. And uh, yeah, just in case, in case someone missed it. So let's look at the map next. So yeah, that's uh, still in Africa, but we are actually not in mainland, mainland Africa anymore, anymore. We were in Fez, uh, in Morocco, we were in Algeria, Mazab, and now we're in Gerba Island. So we've, we've done this sort of little, little loop here. Obviously we're not going to, like in the moon or sun, we can't complete this mini loop because that leaves several continents unvisited wouldn't be a, a trip around the world, right? So it looks like Gladys is going either across the Mediterranean into Europe or uh, across North Africa towards the Middle East there. So uh, that is our current progress with this um, uh, with this series. Uh, also about this map, you can actually check uh, this map whenever you want. It's jaffe.travelmap.net. It's, uh, you can, you don't need any, uh, I think you can just, you can just see, anyone can just see it. Now, uh, one note though, that you might see destinations that, uh, haven't been covered in the videos yet, because I do update the map, uh, before I sort of, before I make the video. So you might spoil some answer. If you look, uh, if you look it up, uh, and you haven't, uh, and that uh, destination hasn't been in a video yet, but uh, if you've followed the puzzles on PSE, uh, it, it, there shouldn't be any sp spoilers. I'm not going to update the map to include destinations that have not not have been that have not been uh, posted on PSE and sold by someone on PSE. So if you if you uh, are following the puzzles on PSE, then that should be safe from the spoiler perspective. Anyway, that was episode 12. That's all. Uh, so we are in Gerba, Tunisia. Not sure we are, where we're going next, but the next uh, uh, puzzle, next uh, episode is going to be titled Under the Sea. No, Under the Surface, sorry. And um, that is not going to be a crossword. There's going to be uh, two grid puzzles that time. So it's going to be a Tentai show and a Kakuro. So two so sort of sort of two two grid puzzles that time. Yeah. So this is all for this video, and I will see you for episode thirteen. Thanks for watching.